Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you game three in a series between T, a death versus Moonglade. Here on Metalopolis, we have um, what a death spawning as the blue Terran player, as I adjust my volume just a little bit higher, hopefully it's not too loud, um, versus Moonglade here on Metalopolis. Um, I know you, some of you guys have been asking me to uh, up, my, up my volume settings a little bit, so there you go, is that better anyways moonglade spawning as the as the purple zerg once again at the nine o'clock position meanwhile a death spawning as the blue terran here at the six o'clock position now pretty much so far we've been seeing similar strategies come in from a death each time around he has been going for all ins in game one it did not work in game two it did and now this is game three in a best of three series. You can see a death doing his best to make sure. Oh, is the SCV going to spot the Overlord? Yes, it will. And now a death knows exactly where Moonglade is, but same thing, vice versa. So a death doing a good job trying to make sure that um, the SCVs are mining away at the closer mineral patches first. And that does give a slight, a very slight economic boost in the early portion of the game. But as I've mentioned in the past, Starcraft is a game of seconds and every second you are just trying to get a slight advantage over your opponent. You can see the command center currently just training up away SCVs. Most likely we will see a double racks pressure come in from a death as it is going to be a little bit of a closer spawn and Moonglade deciding to respond with a spawning pool of his own instead of going for a fast hatchery. And he will be rewarded with that. A death is going to be the one sitting on a very large army and not be able to really do anything about it. SCV now pushing out, going to head around the corner, head up that ramp and take a look and see no hatchery at the low ground. And instead the spawning pool, we could also get an extractor as well. But I believe Glade is just going to go for a, a hatchery now, setting up that hatchery there and then having some zerglings there to also reinforce Unfortunately, that means that he will not have a queen anytime soon. So until this hatchery gets up and running, he is not going to have such a strong economy. Zerglings should now be popping up already. We should be getting a queen up in just a moment as well as three larvae quickly, quickly coming um, will be coming online in just a moment. There's that queen that I mentioned earlier. And now where are the marines? A death not going for that many marines so he has a double front door on barracks but instead he is going to end up responding with a command center of his own it appears so with the command center of his own perhaps he hopes that moonglade will actually overpower uh, or, or just produce too many zerglings and this is just a very big mind game between these two players now who is going to build up the larger army and yes it is it is Moonglade who is sitting on the larger army right now that doesn't really need to be that large. He's sitting on a 250 versus a 50 mineral army. That one marine should be able to fend off any attacks as now we see a marine coming over and he sees the overlord. The overlord now trying to be just trying to run away. It looks like the marine will be able to get off even more shots onto that overlord there. The overlord attempting to just run back. No additional marines. Oh, more marines are being trained, but it will not come in in time. As the Overlord is now down to 85 hit points and the Marine wants to try to finish it off. Is it going to finish off? I, we may have natural regeneration for the win. No, we have a very, very slow movement speed for the win. It'd be able to escape at 29 hit points. Three Marines on side on that front door. Now we can see that the command center about to be completed. 20 SCVs versus 16 drones. But that will quickly, quickly change as Glade now getting double spine crawlers already at this stage in the game he may even try to go for an evolution chamber here or some other building here to prevent any hellions from riding in those spine crawlers are going to be very important to prevent any marine scv all in rushes as we now get nine marines moving out baneling nest coming in much much earlier this time around that is also very important to have that baneling's nest to shut down any scv all in and it looks like glade has learned his lesson from the last time around and Glade now looking to just power drone his way a little bit further. He needed to activate this Zelnaga Watchtower. He did not. And now it looks like an Overlord will get destroyed. A Queen now trying to come in. The Zerglings ending up just sacrificing themselves. So Glade not playing as, as tightly as I would have liked to see. We can see 31 over 28. Oh, now upside down on food. The Queens are going to try to engage. There was another Queen down over here. As the Marines going straight after the drone. One drone down. Two drones. Three drones. And it looks like the Marines are now just trying to fight back. But simply um, just lambs to the slaughter running straight inside <clears throat> the, the Zerg base. Five worker killed. 
28 SCVs versus 18 drones. That is a significant advantage now as a death transitioning into the mid game at 30 or 40 over 40 compared to 28 food count. As we are now going into that blue flame research as well. This is going to be such a nice game now for a death. A death as long as he's only facing up against Zerglings will deal so much damage. The spine crawlers here are now split up a little bit further in order to protect against any baning harassment or sorry hellion harassment as drones now being transferred finally to that low ground we are now seeing on 27 drones compared to 32 scvs and two mules that means the terran player still has a slight economic advantage not very much though as you consider that this orbital command is mining at diminishing returns as now this orbital command needs to land here soon you can see that the food count now starting to even up 55 over 62 compared to 44 over 52. Double um, double training Hellions off of two factories. Blue flame research about to be completed. Um, in the next patch that will actually be a blue flame so that you know the blue flame research. We are not just misrepresenting it. And now another tech lab being added on. So it might be it might transition into marine tank in just a moment. And not quite sure why a death has not landed with this orbital command just quite yet he still needs to train up a lot more marines the hellions looking to move out get some damage in we can see six hellions on the move and now running onto the creep already that creep pretty much re uh, reveals what's going to be happening taking down those creep tumors and now getting a lot of damage in already there is what one spine crawler there the drones oh the baning's now coming over and the hellions are not going to be able to get that much damage in at all the queen now backing off the impaler tentacle coming in the baning's may be able to splash in and get some damage Oh, there is that damage there. As this one queen um, going uh, venturing a little bit too far forward, we have four Hellions left in this group, but the damage was not really dealt at all. And we may see Glade try to use another scanner sweep to reveal these creep tumors and try to slow down this creep spread. Or no, not I'm um, sorry, a death uses a scanner sweep as Glade and is the, is the Zerg player, not the Terran. Excuse me. And the Hellions are just backing backing, and trying to test the front door once more. A nice transfusion there as the Queen now going to engage. It looks like the, what, the Zerglings are going to be able to get some more poking damage there. And now the Zerglings trying to chase after the last of those Hellions. This Queen now off of Creep doing a very, very bad job. But I don't know if the Hellions actually... No, the Hellions do spot that hatchery. This Queen now down to 69 hit points, 70 hit points attempting to run away it looks like it should be able to run away in just a moment as another hatchery being placed down the banelings once again pushing forward but unable to really deal any serious damage at all as they do not have that movement speed upgrade and hellions do move very rather quickly the banelings now pushing forward one one hellion gets taken down but another hatchery is already up now, we are still training a lot of marines and tanks, and I believe a death should be able to push out with this counter army in just a moment. If you take a look at the army sizes, what, 1900 versus 5550 there as the Zerglings finishing off the rest of those Hellions, and now a Glade transferring over this very high energy queen here perhaps should be laying down some creep tumors, as it will not be getting any transfusions off anytime soon. Marines about to finish with that uh, stim pack research about another 40 seconds to go burrow for baneling landmines underway a poor zergling running straight into the a, a swarm of marines as we are now getting a very very heavy macro production from glade glade does not have any roaches which is a bit of a surprise for me as i mean glade and the last time i saw him was a heavily heavily favored roach play and now this time around not even one roach and um, in the mix as we can now see that the marines are should be going after this spine crawler here the spine crawler taking a lot of damage already down it goes but the bane is now coming in the siege tanks are not sieged up and now it really needs to focus onto those bane things there it looks like the bane things are going to be able to take down many marines and for to finish off a lot of those units there as now Oh, um, wow, just the siege tanks were not focusing on the bailings. If the siege tanks had actually gotten one shot off on that tightly grouped number of bailings, it would have been a completely different exchange. And I think um, a death has lost one of his windows of opportunity to try to deal a serious blow. A death does have another um, command center now being built. It will expand into this location here rather easily. 
and now a death is running off of two raxes he could easily um i'm not quite sure why he isn't adding on um adding on reactors there as these siege tanks are just all being rallied all to the wrong spot the siege uh, the barracks need to be repositioned so that these siege tanks don't have to drive nearly as far also i don't see a starport with medevacs yet there is that starport here there you go the barracks are going to be relocated finally and then this should definitely definitely help a death and um, as now a death taking the gold mineral patches so gold mineral is now finally being established at the 14 minute mark of the game mules will quickly mine out this location no planetary fortress though so that will be a little bit more difficult to try to defend against from any zerglings drones now being transferred over as now this is turning into a very heavy macro game 72 drones versus 55 SCVs, mules being called over, marines nearby as well, but still with no medevac, this is going to be very, very difficult as one marine able to finish off a zergling rather easily. The marine did have the armor upgrades, I do not believe the zerglings have the armor upgrade at all. Three zerglings going to take down this one marine. That marine doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, there it goes. So three zerglings now, all they can do is look at, look in horror at the number of which um, just SCVs over here and orbital commands trying to mine more gas as well. The Marine's going to walk up that ramp, get more damage onto those Zerglings there. Another Zergling going to fall. So there it goes. Down it goes there. And perhaps they should try to activate that Zelnaga Watchtower. It is battle for the tower here on Metalopolis or battle for the two towers as an as another larger swarm of zerglings come back in once more. Mutilists are also coming in. Drones being power droned once more. 82 drones versus 65 SCVs. Production, we are still training triple SCVs as well as Moonglade. Now establishing up his fifth base. The primary base of, still has a little bit of life left in it. There you can see about 300 mineral patch, or 300 minerals per mineral patch. The Marines attempting to fight back. A missile turret close enough to get some damage onto those mutilists there. But Glade has finally um, decided if I can't have this tower, no one can. Taking a look at the army, 3850 versus 2800, 1450 versus 1900. We are finally getting, oh, Bathing Landmine action may come in in just a moment. There you go. Multiple Marines just absolutely destroyed. And now, uh, Adeth learned his lesson. He knows that he needs Ravens. Wow, that was a lot of losses there. Um, very, very, uh, very, very uh, just disgusting play if you're a Marine play or a Terran player. And very beautiful play if you are a Terran player there. Thor is also being added to the group. More medevacs being trained. As perhaps we should be getting some SCVs. One siege tank is uh, hiding inside a medevac. Doesn't want to engage. As we now see uh, what a, a, a murder of mutilists moving out and cleaning up a lot of those um, units there. We, oh, sorry, the... And not the units there, just the marines at the Zonaga Watchtowers. There is one marine down here. It will spot, I believe, this um, flock of mutilists coming in. The marine trying to fight back, and now this command center, or rather planetary fortress, will get shut down rather quickly, as there is not, no missile turrets just quite yet. You can see that the, the army now once again trying to push out here. There are two fresh new banelings, and... This is this may be bad once more as there you go another uh, group of marines just completely melted away a death losing his orbital or his command center there but now the main attack force has moved out the mutilists may be able to get in a lot of kills as you can see a thor is nearby getting some damage onto those mutilists there are no thors in this group though marines are going to be you know, be forced to siege up in just a moment Missile turret getting some damage onto the back of those mutilists, but Moonglade does have a very strong economy going for him. And now with such a sea of mutilists in the air, the mutilists over 25, 27 mutilists finishing off the rest of those marines. And now in comes a Thor finally, Banelings and Zerglings also swarming in from the north. The mutilists are stacked on top of each other, but he doesn't care. The sheer size and brute force of this army enough to shut it down and turn it back taking down all of those medevacs as well the another medevac going to get destroyed and wow a death really um he had such a dominant force and unable to really capitalize at all as the mutilists look to once again own the own the skies level two weapons upgrade about to be completed but we will soon have three three marines and we all know how effective three three marines are against mutilists able to deal a lot of damage in 
very very fast fashion as the mutilists are just flying across the map these banelings have been the heroes of the game so far melting away more marines um, than anything else dealing so much damage and really stopping a death in his tracks a death still doesn't have a raven yet and that is my concern if you know your opponent is going for baneling landmines you have to get a raven if you don't then then you are just constantly walking into a trap you can see banelings are over here and over here as well but the marines are not swarming together which is very very important but the mutilist should be able to just pick off a marine after marine zergling's gonna pick off marine after marine there as we now see another group of units and pushing their way in this bailing landmine was caught and so was this one so using scanner sweeps instead and now it looks like a death really countering with a much larger mineral army but his gas army is much weaker a death has armor upgrades on the thor no weapons upgrade and that and, and, and that is not a surprise as the thor as the armor upgrades do help out much more um, tremendously especially against those zerglings and now you can see marines are up on that high ground banelings now coming in the siege tanks need to focus onto the banelings but they do not focus onto the banelings a thor now trying to shut down the rest of the mutilists looking to get a lot of damage in another round of attack marines gonna go after the mutilists there the ma marines are up on that high ground Marines down over here as well. We need another Thor to quickly join in in this fight. Not going to be happening as the Marines not quite uh, now once again returning to try to save their siege tank brethren and now able to do so and a death really needs to repair some of these siege tanks. You can see that um, the exchanges are not going very well at all as more siege tanks are once again rolling into position another siege tank going to get destroyed another one there so two siege tanks because they did not have an escort of marines getting cleaned up once again infestors should be added in 17 mutilists being added that is not the unit tab that is actually the production tab as the banelings rolling apart and taking down so many of those marines once more so constant action in the middle of the map but Moonglade may soon find uh, find out that he is going to be running out of resources. He does have um, he does have the stronger economy right now, and he also has a stronger and um, stronger army advantage. So never mind. I believe Moonglade should be able to finish up as long as he doesn't overcommit into any battle and run um, this flock of mutilists into a group of Thors. He should be able to keep this advantage. You can see that he currently has 2,300 um, minerals, 500 gas as level 2 armor upgrades coming in onto those mutilists as well. The Marines once again pushing forward and as level 3 completes on the layer, we may get level 3 weapon or level 3 weapons and armor upgrades. I don't remember the last time I saw 3-3 three, three upgraded mutilists as Banelings Zerglings just dealing so much damage. The Banelings coming in from behind, rolling through it looks like these marines are attempting to run away but there is a patch of creep right here making it very difficult and now the mutilist and glade knowing that he has the stronger economy is more than happy to trade you can see the harvester count income now 2000 to 2000 once more mules are being called into play here as we are running off of three bases compared to just one now as the mutilists now finish off here and this is going to be a problem a death with no missile turrets is going to lose this um, planetary fortress once again scvs all getting destroyed missile turret trying to be uh, repaired not going to happen another missile turret trying to be repaired not going to happen marines now going toe to toe uh, but now in come the thors the thors getting in some damage there but because of that magic box technique the, um, the Thors are just going to get absolutely destroyed and own Marines once again trying to fight back. And now in comes another Thor, but the Thors attack so slowly and it doesn't look like much is going to be happening here. Uh, but we have a much larger or slightly larger army there. The missile turrets are trying to be rebuilt. The Thor unable to find their targets. As the Thors are currently upgraded a 0 2, and um, it wouldn't matter even if they had 2 0 upgrades, really needs 3 0 upgrades on the Thors in order to two shot a 2 armor mutilus. Infestors now being added, level 2 carapace being added as well. You can see this hatchery is here. Taking a look at the harvester count 91 drones. So with 91 drones, where are those drones? They are probably oversaturating a mineral patch somewhere. No, D Glade has really decent saturation at multiple bases. And perhaps is he finally transferring some? Yes, finally transferring some to that gold mineral patch in the center portion of the map. We are now moving into Broodlords as a greater spire now coming online. 
Mutalists still taking to the skies. We have so many Mutalists, 34 Mutalists in the air. And this, it looks like Glade is looking to establish this hatchery over here, denying his opponent a possible base. As the Marines are just rolling out these Mutalists, so, so strong. A 10k resource army as Glade is now currently maxed out on food. Perhaps we will see a similar play. Oh, as a Death was trying to lift off his Orbital Command and try to reestablish and hide an expansion. Not gonna work at all. Uh, Glade does have a lot of drones now sitting at 86 and we may see the same strategy that we saw um with Sen on Shakura's plateau, he could easily, easily clean up um, or cl clear up a lot of food by building a bunch of spine crawlers and then canceling those spine crawlers and perhaps getting even more and more mutilists or perhaps corruptors into broodlords. But I don't think that e that even needs to happen as this expansion is now falling. It looks like a death is going to be moving in with an all-in. Banelings once again doing their job cleaning up multiple marines. Infestors now making their way forward. Fungal growth coming in. Fungal growth going to be shutting down a lot of those medevacs and those siege tanks. Siege tanks now finally sieging up. As you can see, another command center will be landing there in just a moment. The, sw the swarm of mutilists coming in along the backside should be able to easily flank this position. Zerglings are now pushing their way in. Marines attempting to take down that spine crawler will ha not have a problem. There is some fungal growth after fungal growth after fungal growth. And now some Neural Parasite as well, infesting um, or Neural Parasiting a Marine to add insult to injury and Medivax in order to heal up a Marine. I guess that's kind of pointless to have a meta uh, infested Medivac healing and infested or Neural Parasiting Marine. So that is kind of funny there. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed Game 3 in this um, Best of 3 series. And, and Moonglade just absolutely dominating game three at every step of the game. A death had a lot of opportunities to perhaps push out and move out during the mid portion of the game, but never really, um, never really using the scanner sweeps or building a raven to detect. Excuse me, to detect those banelings, and he just lost too much, and his window of opportunity quickly closed, giving Moonglade the win. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.